In the last video, I solved a handful of uh, past paper questions of the topic permutations and combinations. And when I did that, uh, I got a very overwhelming response from you guys. Uh, you guys reached out to me on Instagram and said uh, to solve more questions. So in this same PDF, I left a couple of questions unsolved, which I said that which I encourage you guys to solve it. And I'm sure some most of you did. But those of you who didn't, uh, there are two or three, yeah, two actually detailed questions, uh, past paper questions that I'm going to solve in this video. And uh, again, the idea remains the same. I've uh, color coded them. So I would suggest that you watch the last video if you haven't to know exactly what each color means. So basically each color represents a certain concept and you'll find these concepts repeating over and over uh, in every past paper question. However, that does, this is a disclaimer. That does not mean that these are the only questions that can come in the exam. You know, um, you know, I, I don't really encourage uh, giving out like predicted questions or, you know, pre or, um, guest papers or anything like that. This is something what uh, we pick by by analyzing uh, lots and lots of uh, past paper questions. And with the help of that, I've been able to do what I did in the last video. Anyway, so let's, without wasting any more time, let's just get straight to it. So it says 11 different television sets are to be displayed in a line in a large shop. Find the number of different ways the televisions can be arranged. Okay, so if you have 11 different televisions, you want to arrange all 11 of them, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Either you do 11 factorial, because you're, 11, uh, you're arranging all 11 of them, or you could do 11, B11, which is essentially the same thing. So 11 factorial is equals to, okay then, we're looking at three nine nine one six eight double zero. So this basically means that you're looking at one, two, three, thirty nine million nine hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred number of ways. Okay, so that's a big number. And I should mention you, uh, you I know you're probably wondering why I haven't, although I hope you're not wondering that, uh, that why ha I haven't rounded this off correct to three significant figures. That's because it's an exact answer. You don't round off exact answers. Okay. Then it says of these television sets, six are made by company A and five are made by company B. Okay. Find the number of different ways the televisions can be arranged so that no two sets made by company A are next to each other. Okay. So this is one concept I think I was not able to cover in the last video. So I'll be able to cover it in this video. I mean, it's the same. I mean, there's still, there's a restriction, but this kind of restriction was not, uh, this is not the kind of restriction that we had to deal with in the last video. So let's see how we're going to work with this. So remember you can't have, two sets made by company A next to each other, okay? So if you can't have two, you can't have three, you can't have four, you can't have uh, five or six, okay? So that means that whenever you have a television set of company A, uh, on the right side of it and on the left side of it, there's gotta be a television of uh, television set of company B, okay? So the best way to do this question, so see the problem here is with uh, television sets made by company A, okay? So as far as company B is concerned, it's nothing to worry about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first settle down the television sets made by company B. So we have how many of them? We have five of them. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, as far as these television sets are concerned, you know, there's nothing to worry about. You can have, I mean, they can arrange themselves whatever way they want. So five, four, three, two, one. So that means uh, five factorial or five P five. Now. As far as television sets made by company A are concerned, we'll have to place them between the television sets made by company B, okay? So that means here's one place where I can place a television set by company B. Here's another, here's another, 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 and another. So all together, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, these are places where we can put television sets by company A. And all together, we have how many places? We have six places, but we don't have, actually we do have six television sets, so that means six P six, okay? So here's how we're gonna do it. As far as company A is concerned, so that's six P six, or again, six factorial. And then as far as company B is concerned, that's gonna be five P five or five factorial, okay? So let's work this out. Six P six multiplied by five P five or five factorial, whatever way you wanna write it. So that gives us 86,400. So there you go, 86,400, and that's the final answer. Okay, then we talk about B part one, which says a group of people is to be selected. Okay, so instantly we should be able to point out that we're dealing with combinations. When you're making a team, okay, when you're selecting people, when you're choosing them, you're really not worried about what order it is as long as you're selecting the same combination. Then it says calculate the number of different groups of four people that have exactly three 
women. Okay, so number of different groups of four people that have exactly three women. So that means as far as the women are concerned, we have a total of five to choose from and we want exactly three of them. So 5C3, okay. So that means that that one place, that one missing place has to be filled by a man and we have three of them to choose from and we're gonna choose one. So the way to do that is 3C1, okay. So let's work this out. So 5C3 times 3C1, so that's equal to 30. So that means altogether you can have 30 different groups where you have exactly three women and one man. Okay, then it says calculate the number different, uh, calculate the number of different groups of at most four people. Okay, so that's something we need to watch out for, where the number of women is the same as the number of men. Okay, so at most four people, that means you've got to have maximum number of people that you can have in a group. In this particular group is four. So you can't, you can have one, you can have two, you can have three, you can have four. But there's another condition. The other condition is that the number of women should be the same as the number of men or vice versa. So that means... Is it possible to have a group of one? Of course not. That means you need half a man and half a woman, which is not possible. Is it possible to have a group of three? Which, uh, again, it's not possible because that means you'll have, you will have one and a half woman and one and a half man. Again, not possible. So that means you can have a group of two people or you can have a group of four people, okay? So here are the number of men and here are the number of women. So you can have one, one, yeah. So you can have a group of two. That means that way you'll have one man and one woman. Or you can have a group of four, which way, uh, and that means you'll have two men and two women. So the total number of men that we have to choose from are three. So that means 3C1 multiplied by the total of number of women that we have to choose from are five. So that's 5C1. So let's work this out. I'll write this separately. 3C1 times 5C1. So 3C1 is three, 5C1 is five. So that's 15, but that's not the end of the question because there's another possibility and that is 3C2 times 5C2. So let's break this out. I'll write this on the side here, 3C2 times 5C2. So let's see, 3C2 is three into 5C2, which I guess is 10. So that's gonna be 30, yep, 30 plus 15 is 45. So that means the total number of groups that you can have, different groups that you can have, where you have at most four people, where the number of women is the same as the number of men is equal to 45. And this I should mention, uh, if I haven't already, that this is a question from May 2019, paper two, variant one. Okay, and then we move on to another question, which is also from May 2019, but this question, this particular question, is from paper one, variant two. Okay, and so it's very similar to the question above. Not, ex not very similar, actually, let's just find out, okay. Never mind what I said. Uh, eight books are to be arranged on a shelf. There are four mathematics books, three geography books, and one French book. Find the number of different arrangements of the books if there are no restrictions. So again, no brainer, eight factorial or eight P8, okay? So eight factorial, so that's equal to 40,320. There you go. Then it says, find the number of different arrangements if the mathematics books have to be kept together. So again, this particular kind of question is not something we dealt with in the last video. So we'll find out how exactly we need to do questions like these. So you need to keep all the mathematics books together. So first I'm gonna lay them out. So we have four of them. One, two, three, four. Oops, sorry, that's five, yeah. And then, so these are all the math books, okay? Let me just color code them. So the ones that you see in red are math and the ones that you see in green are either geography or French, okay? So we're not really worried about uh, separating or you know keeping geography and French together. So you know we're just gonna uh, use one color for them. Now coming back to math, as far as math books are concerned, yes, they have to be together, but they can sort of shuffle amongst them, uh, themselves, okay? So that means since there are four of them, they can shuffle amongst themselves four factorial number of ways, okay? So that means that you have four places and you have four books, so you know they can be arranged four factorial number of ways. And then uh, we talk about the number of um, geography and French books. So as far as geography and French are concerned, okay, so they can be arranged how many ways? They can be arranged four factorial number of ways. Now, here's the catch. This is not gonna be four factorial, okay? So I'm not gonna do four factorial times four factorial. Why? Because you can't, I mean, one way to do this, one way to think of this is that while this is one arrangement where you have all the math books and then geography and French, which you can shuffle, okay, whatever way you want, but there nowhere in the question does it say that you should have first all the math books and then geography and French. So that means if I want, I can change this arrangement like 
like this. Okay, I can first have a geography or a French book, and then I can have um, all the four math books, and then I can have the remaining geography or French books, whatever. And then I can do the same. And let me show you guys how that works. So let me copy this and paste it. So that means I can drag this over here. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so let me just do that again. Should probably just make a new blank. Anyway, yeah. So this is another way of doing it. Okay, and there's yet another way. In fact, there are two more ways and you probably know what that is. You can probably see it coming now. Let me place this nicely. Okay. And then you can have one, two, three, three geography or could be French. And then you can have all the four math books that we're talking about, which again can be arranged for factorial number of ways. And then you can again have the, the one book that's left from geography or French. And then finally, you can have all four books, including geography and French. And then you can have the remaining four books. Now, the whole point of telling you this is that if you don't pay attention to the fact that the math books, that, that one set of math books can also be placed between uh, geography and French books, so you're going to get this question wrong. And the way to do this question now is, okay, keeping all these arrangements in mind, is that first you'll do four factorial. And then as far as these books are concerned, okay, uh, geography and French, so you can have four, three, two, one, okay, they can shuffle themselves as uh, however they way, however way they want so you can have four factorial and then again four factorial or four into three into two into one and then if you just stop here you'll get the question wrong okay so which is why i always suggest my students that instead of doing this however what you can do is you can do four factorial into four factorial multiplied by five okay so one way to look at this question would be that you do four factorial for math and then four factorial and then five, okay? And let me let me point out what exactly is what. So the first four factorial that you see is for all the math books, okay? So let me just write this down. This factorial is for all the math books. This is for geography and French. And this five that you see is basically representing this. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Now, what I would recommend is that you don't do all of this, okay? So you lay out how many how many books do you have in total? You have eight books in total, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you put four of them in a box and write four factorial because they can shuffle amongst themselves, as I pointed out. And then you count the total number of boxes that you have, okay? Boxes or spaces. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five. So four factorial multiplied by five factorial because this box in itself can be placed between uh, these blank spaces that we have so you work this out four factorial times five factorial which is equal to 2880 and if you had done what i wrote earlier let's see what you would have gotten we would have, we would have gotten the same answer because it's four factorial into four factorial into five so that's essentially the same as four factorial into five factorial so that's also equal to 2880 so i hope you guys have understood this uh, there's no need to elaborate this question when you're solving it yourself or when you're doing it in the actual exam. The reason why I did it for you so that you guys know exactly what's going on in this question and exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Anyway, so that brings me not to the end of the question, but yeah, to part three, which says find the number of different arrangements. If the mathematics book have to be kept together and the geography books have to be kept together. Okay, then. So we have a total of eight books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's put the four math books in a box. So we're looking at four factorial and we had three geography books, if I remember correctly. Yep. So let's put three of them in a box so that we have three factorial. Now, remember, we have one, two and three. Okay. So we have three unique uh, sets you can call it okay so we're looking at four factorial times three factorial times three factorial okay so this four factorial the first four factorial that you see is for math the second three factorial that you see is for geography okay i'll just write geo and then the three factorial that you see is the arrangement that these books when they're kept together can have okay so you can have four math books then the geography books and then that one remaining french book okay or you can have um, you can have uh, French, math, and then geography, or you can have geography, math, and then French, okay? So this takes into account all of that once you do three factorial. 
and uh, let's see what do we get we get so 4 factorial into 3 factorial into 3 factorial so we get 864 so 864 is your final answer for part 3 now we come to part B which says a team of 6 pairs is to be chosen from 8 men and 4 women find the number of different ways this can be done if there are no restrictions so no restrictions uh, is a no-brainer all the time so all you got to do is uh, 6 pairs are the number of pairs that you're choosing from a total of 12 because you have 8 men and 4 women so you're looking at you're talking about 12 c6 and let's work that out 12 c6 so we're looking at 924 as our final answer then it says there is at least one woman in the team now you can expect questions like these especially when you're dealing with a team so at least one woman in the team now remember uh we're talking about six pairs here okay and down in this in questions like these again i first like to lay it out exactly the possible combinations that we can have and then do the calculations so we're talking about men and women okay so we're making a team of six so at least one woman basically means let's say you have one woman and then the remaining five places will have to be filled by men and then you can have two women and then you can have four men okay to fill up the remaining places you can have three women and then you can have three men to fill up the remaining places and then you can have four women and then you can have uh, two men to fill up the remaining places now you could have had five women and two men to fill up the remaining places but that's not possible it's not because it's uh, it's not satisfying the given condition it is satisfying the given condition but it's not possible relative to this question because you just have four women to choose from okay so how many men do you have in total you have eight men okay so i'll just write eight here and four here showing their respective totals so in how many ways can i choose five men out of eight so that's eight c5 and then one woman out of four so that's four c1 we'll calculate that in the next step and then eight c4 multiplied by four c2 and then 8c3 multiplied by 4c3 and then 8c2 multiplied by 4c4 now let's work this out individually so 8c5 times 4c1 is 224 and then 8c4 8c4 times 4c2 is 420 and then 8c3 times 4c3 is 224 again and then 8c2 times 4c4 which is 1 so that's 28 now let's sum this up 224 plus 420 plus 224 plus 28 is equal to 896 which is the final answer now that brings me to the end of this video and i hope this with the help of this video there's not a single concept that i haven't covered uh in the next video i will be next in line the next topic that i have in line is hopefully kinematics and we'll see about that we'll see how it goes and again if you have any uh, request if you have a particular question that you want me to solve of kinematics you can reach out to me on instagram and let me know so i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care bye, -bye.